Fraud can be found in virtually every venue of life and in every nation. There's no fraudster look. There are no fraudster languages and buzzwords. Sometimes the victims of fraud almost beg to be victims. Hi, I'm Chuck Gallagher and welcome to my ethics series. As a business ethics keynote speaker and author, I have learned that across the spectrum of fraud, there are three unchanging commonalities. Fraudsters operate best when there is no oversight. Fraudsters do what they do out of need, and fraudsters quickly learn how to rationalize their behavior. Enter Richard Rufus and the 18 million pound scam. Now, chances are you've never heard of Richard Rufus, but you will recognize his scam. You see, he was once a pretty decent English footballer in the highest league. He was a pretty big deal in the late 90s. For many people, just being around a former pro athlete or, or any kind of celebrity is kind of a big deal. In fact, people who are normally level-headed about most anything in life often go to irrational pieces when they encounter a celebrity. And Richard Rufus knew this. One of the irrational aspects of celebrity worship is that people see an actor, for example, and they believe they're wiser and better educated when it comes to politics. People see a politician and they believe they're savvy. About sports, people see an ex-athlete and somehow believe the athlete is not only tremendously wealthy, but can automatically attract more money. Rufus knew that. Okay, Richard Rufus has just been sentenced for scamming family and friends out of approximately 18 million pounds. The British legal system found him guilty of money laundering, false representation, and fraud. According to the British paper, The Telegraph, on January 12, 2023, Rufus convinced up to 100 of his nearest and dearest, including former footballer Paul Elliott, to invest in his fraudulent foreign currency exchange scheme by claiming the likes of then England star Rio Ferdinand has already done so. In other words, he dropped names of associated celebrities to unsuspecting people and convinced them that the celebrities were on board his currency exchange business. And the naive people were caught up in Rufus' persona, the way he dressed, the way he lived, the experiences of life, and they assumed he was successful. It was running a Ponzi scheme. Now remember in fraud, I talk about the pit, P-I-T, promise, illusion, and trust. Richard played on trust by scamming his family and closest friends, and that's not unusual. The prosecuting attorney said he scammed friends, family, and associates out of millions of pounds by pretending he was able to offer a low-risk investment in the foreign exchange market. He claimed he had significant success with his strategy. In the past, and Rufus took over 15 million pounds in total. He traded some of it, as I've said, losing fast amounts, but, but that wasn't the end of the fraud. In addition, the former professional footballer took in almost 18 million pounds, but only attempted to invest 2 million in the business. The rest was spent on luxury items, on shopping, fine dining, and travel. Even more troubling was that he lacked the proper licensing to run a business of that nature. No one had thought to check the credentials of his business. Fortunately, investors received about half their money back. Not really bad for a Ponzi scheme. Now, as a business ethics keynote speaker and an author, I know that whether we're talking about Bernie Madoff or Richard Rufus, most victims are simply not wired to accept the fact that fraudsters often lack conscience. Rufus didn't care who he scammed. His need for money and power were too great. Innocent people might ask, how could he rationalize what he did? We might assume their rationalizations were logical, but they often aren't. How do I know? Well, once upon a time, I too was a scammer. Not proud of that, by the way. But I know how it works and what to look for. Unfortunately, those taken in by Rufus asked the wrong questions. They needed business plans, statements, marketing materials and such. They needed credentials, references, auditing and accounting information. Instead, they were taken in by fame. So, maybe this is a good lesson for all of us. Go for the ethics, not for the glamour. In the end, he was simply another con artist trying to score goals for himself and his friends and family lost. Hey, subscribe to my channel and feel free to share any thoughts you might have about this or other cases we discussed.